All right, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So good to see you all. Um, everybody can hear? Doing good? Thumbs up in the back, yeah? yeah. All right, good. That's what, that's what we like to see. All right, um, before we get started, uh, I want to share a couple things with you. Thanks for coming out um, today, and I just want to share that I'm going to be sending out an email for those of you that have email every Friday, just sort of saying here's what's coming up this weekend. Um, our permission to do this outdoors is sort of uh, on a, it's more like an ongoing conversation. And so uh, I just want to make sure that you know that we are going to have it uh, this Sunday, uh, this coming Sunday or, or whenever that is. Um, some churches in Tennessee in our conference, our conference is Southwest Virginia and Tennessee. And in Tennessee, they're starting to shut churches down again as cases go up. So um, hopefully that us being so far north and having a low uh, number of cases employed will keep us open uh, for outdoor worship. But I just want to let you know, I'll be sending out information via email. And if that happens, we'll just move to online. So, um, Also, I'll share a couple of announcements with you. Um, if you're interested in being an offering teller, contact Misty. All you have to do is uh, count the money with some other folks after the service. And we've got gloves for you to wear and everything like that. But we need some volunteers to help with that. So just let Misty know if you're willing to do that. Also, if you're on the trustees committee, we've got a meeting uh, this Wednesday. Uh, July 15th at 7 p.m. It's going to be right here in the outdoor pavilion. Um, so if you're on trustees or you know somebody on trustees, make sure they know about that. Um, and if you're on our reopening team, we're going to meet the following Wednesday, uh, July 22nd at 4 p.m. right here and uh, going to evaluate what we're doing. So if you've got feedback or comments on what we're doing outside, let me know and uh, we'll take a look at that. And also uh, for students in grades 7 through 12, uh, we're going to do online meetings coming up at the end of the month. So that's that's all we can do right now. But I'm looking forward to hanging out with uh, our, our youth online. So on Sunday, July 26th at 7 p.m., I'm going to send you all some information about how you can uh, join us online for that. All right. Um, and now as we begin this time of worship together, let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day, and for this time that we can come to worship you. God, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be present with us now, that we may worship you today in spirit and in truth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <coughs> All creatures of our God and King, Lift up your voice and with us sing, oh, praise ye, hallelujah. Oh, brother sun with golden beam, oh, sister moon with silver gleam, oh, praise ye, oh, praise ye, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. tender heart, forgiving others take your part, oh praise ye, hallelujah, ye who long pain and sorrow bear, praise God and on him cast your care, oh praise ye, oh praise ye, hallelujah, Hallelujah. Let all things the Creator bless and worship Him in humbleness. Oh, praise ye, Hallelujah. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise ye. Oh, praise ye, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you all. This is one of the most musically talented churches I've ever been a part of. Uh, thank you so much. Before we continue with our worship, take just a few seconds to stand up and wave at your neighbor. And just a uh, hello, how you doing? Greet them. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, thank you all so much. We're going to continue in our time of worship by praying together. Before we do that, I want to lift up some prayer requests that um, you all have submitted that uh, I want to share so we can be in prayer for each other. Um, we want to pray for um, uh, Terry and Carolyn Quinn's daughter, Marlene, for her continued health. And um, we want to pray for Don Gardner, who is recovering from surgery right now. And so we want to continue to keep him in our prayers. Uh, I want to mention that um, Brad Delaney, um, who's a part of our congregation, is now, um, he's an ordained minister, and he's been appointed to a, uh, be a pastor at, uh, he's the senior pastor at Blacksburg United Methodist Church right up the road. So uh, he's going to be doing that, and so we want to pray for him and pray for his whole family as they move into that new ministry role. And uh, Michael's here today. Hey, Michael. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we want to keep him in our prayers. And uh, also, he has uh, an MRI coming up on Friday, so we want to pray for him for that as well. Um, also want to pray for... Um, Zane, Elder Danny. Zane has uh, had an MRI this week, and the um, um, contact fluid, he had a reaction to it. So we want to uh, continue to pray for him and that he'll be feeling 100% uh, better soon. And he's watching online today. Um, and the last one, we want to pray for um, Tom, Mike Giles' son, who is uh, in Afghanistan. We'll be there till October. Lieutenant Colonel in the military, so we want to especially keep him in our prayers too. And with that, let's uh, go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we have so much to be thankful for. As we come together in worship, I give you thanks for your grace that follows us wherever we go, for your mercy that is always there for us when we need it. And God, we ask that you would be with all those names that we've mentioned today and be with those that we've named in our hearts. God, we know that you know each person and you know each situation. And God, we ask that you would continue to move and work among us, that you would work to bring about your peace, your healing, and that this world would be a place full of your love. God, we lift up to you today our church. We give you thanks that we have this opportunity to worship together in person and online. And we pray for each other, for each person worshiping today. God, we ask that you would inspire us by your Holy Spirit to be a people dedicated to sharing the gospel, the good news of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to be people that share your message of salvation with those who need it most, that bring hope into hopeless situations and can speak truth. God, we ask that you would continue to be in and among us as we worship you today. All this we ask in your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As Misty comes to provide our offertory today, I want to remind you that to give your offering, there's a couple of places around you can drop off your offering, or we still have online giving, and all those are options.
Cindy has our children's sermon today. And uh, kids, just stay right where you are. But if you like to stand up, you're welcome to. Um, Good morning. Good morning. Where is everybody? Hey. So what have you all been doing this summer? Like what kind of activities have you all been doing, kids? Anybody? Painting. Painting. Anything else? Slip and slide. Slip and slide. How about down there? Anybody? Anybody been swimming? Oh, okay. There's a hand back there. Has anybody been fishing? I just would love to learn how to fish. I don't know how. I don't know why I don't know how. But you know what Jesus says, and Pastor Timothy last week said, we should be fishers of men. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 20, it says, As Jesus was walking by Lake Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon and his brother Andrew. They were throwing a net into the lake because they were fishermen. Jesus said, come and follow me. I will make you fish for people. Fish for people? What in the world? So Simon and Andrew immediately left their nets and followed him. So they left what they were doing and followed Jesus because they realized that Jesus had a really important job for them. So today I have brought a fisherman with me. Come here, fisherman. And by the way, I've been married to this fisherman for 34 years today. So it's oh. I don't even know what these parts are. Let's see. What, what are these things? I know this is a hook, right? Is that right? Yeah. Joe, is that right? This would be called a reel. Oh, that's the pole. The reel. Uh, fishing line. I've used that to hang things before. Oh, what else? Well, the hook. That's it. Okay. So, if Jesus says, let's fish for people, what do you think we should do? Let's see. Should we use a worm? <laughs> should we use a worm to fish for people? Ah, he has an idea. He's so smart. Maybe a barbless hook. Ah, a barbless hook. That might be a good idea. Oh, he has candy. We could lure people into church with candy. Would that work? Maybe. That's just kind of a bait. Would that keep them there? Probably not. Okay, what else? How else do we bring people into church? He has lots of pockets. This fisherman doesn't use a tackle box. He uses a fishing vest. Okay. Oh, money. People love money. Do you think you would come to church if we offered you money? Maybe once or twice, but then, I don't know. What else do you have? What else can we do for people? What's an idea? What else can we do? Love. Love, exactly. That's a good one. He's got something else here on his little fishing pole. Oh, a happy smiling face. What about that? That might bring people in. Would that keep people here? Maybe. I, I think that's that has a lot to do with how I feel about church. He has something else in another pocket. Hmm. Let me help him. <laughs> Oh, he has an idea! <laughs> yeah, he has an idea! That's a great. <laughs> he ran out of pockets! <laughs> oh, he has something really good. Oh, the cross. What would we say about the cross? Can we tell people that Jesus died on the cross for them? And that because Jesus died on the cross, they can go to heaven and live forever? Do you think that would keep people coming back to church time after time? I think we could be fishers of men. And I think the cross would do that. I think all those other all those other things will bring people in, but this is exactly what Jesus wants us to do, and that's why he wants us to be fishers of men. So when you think what you can do, your job is to be a fisher of people and bring people into the church. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all that you've given us, for all the blessings that we have. And thank you for the cross that you died on so we can have life eternal. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much.
Our gospel lesson for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 16 through 19, and verses 25 through 30. And if you will, today I'm going to ask you to stand uh, where you are out of reverence for the gospel. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither drinking, nor came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Join with me in prayer. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you, O oh Lord, are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I was really looking forward to this summer. Um, in previous years, my summers have always been packed, packed to the brim. Uh, when I was in college, I always worked at camp. Great experience, loved it, but summer goes by like this. I mean, it's just over before you know it. Staying busy, first week, before you blink and it's the last week. And then when I went to seminary, um, Duke wanted us to get as much ministry experience as possible. So as soon as classes ended, they uh, signed us to churches and we went off to work full-time in churches during the summer to get full-time ministry experience in between. And I thought, okay, this year is going to be a time when I can actually slow down when summer gets here. I can slow down. I might even take a week off. Didn't happen. Um, and that's okay. And believe it or not, this is actually restful for me. It's actually more work to put together an only online service than to do an in-person service that's streamed online, believe it or not. Uh, so I'm, I'm enjoying this and enjoying a little bit of rest from, from the work. Um, but there's the kind of rest that we take when we rest away from um, the work that we do, the rest that we find when we uh, rest after a hard day's work or something like that. But there's a different kind of rest. And I want to talk about a different kind of rest today. It's the kind of rest we have when we feel complete peace, purpose, and wholeness. This is a beautiful passage, and you've probably heard it before. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. I'm gentle and humble. Humble in heart, you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Beautiful passage, and often it's read at funerals. Very meaningful, and, um, and that's great. But Jesus didn't mean for us to only find rest and, and peace when we die. Jesus meant for us to find rest and peace right now, right here with God. And so what does the rest of God look like? Well, first I think we can rest in God's forgiveness. Last week we talked about the woman at the well. And we talked about how God offers forgiveness to everyone. And then... Um, I just want to let you know if if you sort of if that was your first time when you put your faith in Christ, it's not going to be uh, a perfect life from here on out. And if you've been a Christian for a long time or any amount of time, you know that uh, perfection is hard to achieve. And even after we put our faith in Christ, sometimes we fail and sometimes we sin. But there's a rest that we have when we rest in God and we trust in God's forgiveness for us. Resting in salvation. Not that we sin just to sin and know that we're covered. Not Salvation isn't like a, a get out of hell free card or anything like that. But it is something 
that we can rest in, that we can find uh, solitude in, that we can find peace about. So we rest in forgiveness. Jesus comes and and Matthew points out that people uh, talked about Jesus because he was friends with tax collectors and sinners. And that's a comfort for us because we know our own sin. And if Jesus cared enough to hang about, hang around with sinners when he was here doing his earthly ministry, he cares enough about you to offer salvation and forgiveness to you again and again. Well, the second thing I think we can rest in is we can find rest in the confidence of God's presence with us. The, God's presence with us did not um, end when Jesus ascended into heaven, but rather the Holy Spirit is with us now, working in and among us and giving us presence. Um, some preachers will, um, maybe uh, some TV preachers, will tell you that um, once you put your faith in Christ, your life's going to be perfect. And you're not going to have any problems. You're not going to have any stressful situations. Everything's going to go right for you. And I'm just here to tell you, that is not true. (laughs) Every day is not a Friday. (laughs) Some days it's Monday. (laughs) And some days you have a difficult day. And even though we put our faith in Christ, some days we go through uh, pain and heartache. And people we care about get sick. And those that we love pass away. Life is not always going to be um, the way we want it to be. But that's not what God promised us. Jesus is uh, teaching. And here in um, chapter 11, Matthew tells us that Jesus has just finished teaching. And in in Matthew, everything is building up to the crucifixion, to the death and resurrection of Christ. Everything is moving towards it. Everything is foreshadowing that. So we can't think about Jesus being on the temple now being on the uh, Mount of Teaching without also thinking about Jesus being on Mount Calvary and moving towards his suffering and his death. Jesus had a difficult life. He went through heartache and pain, but he had God's presence. He was God's presence for us, and he could rest in God. And I think the more I've reflected on this passage and meditate on what it means, I think that means that Jesus could rest because he was fulfilling his purpose, because he was doing what the Father had called him to do, because he was living into who he was. He was here to teach us and to show us and to make a way for us to be with God. That's a rest that Jesus could find in fulfilling his purpose. We too have purposes that God has called us to do. It's something that we practice Have you ever heard this phrase, practice our faith? Um, It's something that we have to work at. Um, I love this image that Jesus gives here. Uh, We played the flute for you and you did not dance. He's comparing his own ministry to a flute player and people not responding to it by not joining in in the dance. Um, I'm not much of a dancer myself, but uh, I watch America's Got Talent. Anybody watch America's Got Talent? Yeah, you watch some of the dance groups. I have no idea how they get that many people to do the same thing at the same time. I I have no idea how that works. I could never be a part of anything like that. Uh, Can never do, can never do that. And how do they do it? It takes practice. The faith is something that we work at. We work at being in God's presence. And how do we practice being and resting in God's presence? We pray. We spend that time with God. We come together and we worship. And we can rest in the fact that even when we're bad at it, We're practicing it, and we're working at it, and we still have God's presence with us. Here's the final thing that I want you to take rest in today. Take rest in the simple truth that God loves you. There's a need that we all have, a need to be loved. Um, I grew up watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Anybody watch that? I've got people here, so I'm going to take polls as often as possible for as much interaction, because you can raise your hands, okay? Uh, But uh, um, listen to these words from Fred Rogers. By the way, Fred Rogers was an ordained minister, if you didn't know that. Um, He said, everyone longs to be loved, and the greatest thing that we can do is to let people know that they are loved and capable of loving. Love Love is not a state of perfect caring. It's an active noun like struggle. To love someone is to strive to accept that person exactly the way he or she is right here and now. 
And when I say, when I say to you, uh, I'm not sure what this means. Anyway, uh, let me skip. It's that deep part of you that allows you to stand for those things without which humankind cannot survive. Love that conquers hate, peace that rises triumphant over war, and justice that proves more powerful than greed. His point here is that everyone needs love, that everyone desires to be loved, and love is a great gift. The greatest gift of love that the world has ever seen is the giving of Jesus, the giving of God's gift of his only son. This is what we all need, to be loved, and to know that we are loved by God. And no matter what we go through in life, no matter what's going on in our world, death, disease, sickness, despair, joblessness, poverty, we all can rest in the fact that we are loved by God. St. Augustine said this prayer, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Have you heard that before? One of my favorite quotes, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. I believe that each of us have a desire for God in our hearts, that God is what makes us whole, that God is what completes us, and without God, we are left empty and void. To achieve rest, to achieve that kind of peaceful understanding, it can only be done with God in a relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. This week, I hope you'll take some time to rest. Maybe you're taking uh, planning a vacation or something like that. Maybe this summer you've got a vacation coming up, a rest from work, and I hope you have that as well. But I hope you also take time to rest, to remember that there's forgiveness for your sin, that God is with you even in the midst of difficult and hard circumstances, and that the greatest thing of all is that God loves you. He made you, and he loves you very deeply. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, let's stand together as you're able, and we're going to say the words of the Apostles' Creed if you know them from memory. And let's affirm our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I am weak for thou art strong Jesus keep me from all wrong I'll be satisfied as long as I Close to thee, just a closer walk with thee. Grant that Jesus is my plea, daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it This world of coils and snares. If I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Just a closer walk with me. Granted, Jesus is my plea, daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be, when my feeble life is old.
Time for me will be no more. To thy shore, dear Lord, to thy shore, just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my peace. say thank you for being here today and thank you for coming out and worshiping this helps me rest in god's calling for me to to, to worship with you all and to, and to preach so um thank you so much for coming out today i hope you've been able to rest in this service of worship and the fact that um, god loves you and now if you will stand and receive this benediction <clears throat> the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace amen yeah.